Slide lock sleeve into position, then tighten the red hand knobs to secure the bearing cap. The tube stands come with an assortment of spacers. The spacers are marked for the correct size of tubing you will be working with. Install U-joint into fixture. Make sure bolts are secure. Now install weld yoke onto fixture U-joint. Again, make sure to tighten bolts securely. After assembly, the U-joint should move freely and not be tight as this could affect balancing. Be sure the spindle and the fixture mating surface have been wiped clean of dirt and debris. The fixture simply bolt to the spindles using two hex head bolts. Tighten hex bolts securely by hand. The tube stands will hold the tube level for pressing. The press-up plate is for pressing on the open end of the tube. The machine center point is for pressing spline yokes into the tube as well. Secure the press-up plate with the socket head cap screws. Slide tailstock until press-up plate makes contact with the tube. Adjust hand knobs until they make contact with the machine way. The stop lock will be positioned under the tailstock. Make sure the teeth are fully engaged. If not, then reposition one tooth back. Advance the hydraulic piston until the tailstock makes contact with the stop lock. Now release the foot pump pressure and tighten the two lock bolts securely. When pressing the driveline together, it is important to help the tube find its center with the weld yoke. Always use pressure from a vertical or straight up and down fashion. Never hit the driveline from the side. Continue pressing until tube makes contact with the shoulder on the weld yoke. After pressing in the first end, release the pressure from the hydraulic foot pump. Then loosen the hand knobs and the lockdown bolts. Always retract the spindle to its original starting point. Install spline yoke into tube, then slide tailstock to make contact with the spline yoke. Make sure the spline yoke is free for the timing process. The level and spline level base are the tools needed for timing or phasing the driveline. Place the level base evenly over the center spline. Start first by leveling the weld yoke. Then level the spline yoke by rotating the spline yoke until level. Go back and forth until the two are level with each other. When the two are level, the driveline is in correct phase. Once the driveline has been correctly phased, you can now lock down the tailstock for pressing. Tighten the hand knobs, position the lock block, and tighten the lock bolts. Remember, when pressing, always apply pressure from a vertical or straight up and down fashion. Never hit the driveline from the side. Continue pressing until spine yoke stops about a sixteenth inch from the shoulder. After pressing, retract the spindle and loosen the hand knobs, remove the gear rack, and loosen the two lockdown bolts.
Once the drive line is pressed together, it will need to be straightened. The slip yoke will need to be installed to do this correctly. Always use the provided rubber pads when working with the fixtures. After installing the U-joint into the other fixture, install the slip yoke onto the U-joint and secure all bolts tightly. Now, install the slip yoke with the fixture attached. Make sure to line up the center spline so the drive shaft will be phased correctly. Now slide the tailstock to meet with the slip yoke fixture. Bolt the two together with the two hex bolts provided. Proceed now to lock the tailstock down by tightening the hand knobs and the lockdown bolts. The gear rack will not be necessary at this point. After the tailstock is locked down, remove the tube stand spacers and prepare to straighten the driveline. 